I'm Bree, and this is TJ. In 2017, we decided to break away from the norm and travel the U.S. in our custom 4x4 van and Airstream. We loaded up our two dogs, Madly and Brody, and hit the road. We quickly realized life on the road is full of surprises, and our name embracing detours fit our new life perfectly. Please subscribe and welcome to the adventure. When traveling across Nebraska, it's tempting to jump on Interstate 80, but instead we opt to take the road less traveled and see what we can find. It doesn't take long before we come across a quirky roadside attraction. Where have we come? We have come to the infamous Carhenge, <laughs> in, right outside of Alliance, Alaska. Oh, you just said Alaska. Oh. I think you're having uh, wishful thinking. <laughs> right outside of Alliance, Nebraska. There you go. <laughs> long, long travel day. We went to <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, your first question when coming to Carhenge might be why, but according to the creator, Jim Rinder, his answer would be, why not? Apparently, Jim was a petroleum engineer in England and had the grand idea to recreate Stonehenge in his hometown of Alliance, Nebraska. And here we are, Carhenge. <laughs> we love quirky roadside attractions. So when we knew we were going to be passing close by this, we knew we had to stop. Are there any cool cars up there? There's no lilies and a couple Cadillacs. Those are cool. There's a Gremlin, which is totally not a cool car. How many people are you going to offend that own gremlins <laughs> at one point in their lives? Uh, my mom had a gremlin. <laughs> it was the ugliest car I ever made. We are checking out the cars and TJ just, TJ just said, that's an interesting place to put the gas tank. <laughs> Usually they're this way. This one is in like that. Which is weird. Never seen that before. <laughs> it's just, I find it funny the things you take away. <laughs> Not into art. It's still a car to me. Well, what are your thoughts? It's more interesting than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. It's just kind of <laughs> cool. Bree was originally, uh, she was all for coming here, and I was kind of like, man, nah, it's cars stuck in the ground. Not really all that interested in it, honestly, but it's pretty cool. Well, I'll admit it. It's worth the stop, for sure. I'm definitely a fan of quirky, maybe more so than TJ. <laughs> I like quirky, but you know, we've seen cars on the ground before and it was kind of a disappointment. So he has a very valid point. We went to um, Cadillac Ranch and they've done a much better job maintaining this one. The gray, they've painted them all gray, which is a little bit boring. I did like the graffiti at Cadillac Ranch, but there was litter everywhere. People were just really abusing that one. Yeah, it was. Cadillac Ranch is just out in the middle of a field. There's no, right. you know, this has like a nice entryway. It's kind of a little rest stop. Right. And that was more of just a muddy field. <laughs> well, muddy when we went there. Right. And people, yeah, kind of weren't very respectful of it. They just threw their garbage everywhere, left paint cans everywhere. Right. I can see where it could become a problem real quick, so. Yeah. We head east from Alliance and across the Sandhills Journey Scenic Byway. 
The sandhills are the largest grass-stabilized dune field in the world, and without the grasses, they would be the largest sand dune field in the Western Hemisphere. The byway meanders through an undulating sea of grass as far as the eye can see, dotted periodically by wind-driven wells which water the cattle, through several small farming communities, and alongside trains making their journey across the country. The Sandhills Journey Scenic Byway stretches 272 miles along Nebraska Highway 2 from Alliance to Grand Island, but we end our day a little short of that in Broken Bow. few hours east through the Nebraska sand hills uh, and landed in a town called Broken Bow, Nebraska. And the plan was to stay in another harvest host. There is a brewery here that we've been trying to get a hold of for several days. We've left several messages for them and they never got back with us and when we got there they didn't have availability which was really disappointing. But actually we ended up in, what is it called? Tomahawk Municipal Park. $20 a night, full hookups, and it's actually a really nice campground, so I couldn't be happier. I've been laying on this blanket under the shade tree. The dogs have uh, lots of room to explore and smell and roll in the grass, and I've been catching up on my YouTube videos this afternoon. It's been a really nice, relaxing afternoon. out of Broken Bow, Nebraska this morning. Just one night here, but it was a good night. I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Yep. I got to take showers. We're so fresh and so clean. Yep, sometimes those detours work out for the best, for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well said. After spending the previous day avoiding the interstate to drive through the Nebraska sand hills, we decide to backtrack a bit so we can visit the world's largest rail yard. made it to North Platte, Nebraska, mm -hmm. and we are at the Golden Spike Tower. Yes, so behind us is Union Pacific's Bailey Rail Yard, which is the largest rail yard in the world. Yep. It's where the east meets the west for railroads. For the Union Pacific for Union line. Pacific, yes. Yeah, exactly. They handle over 10,000 cars a day at this rail yard. It's also very windy. We're on the outside observation deck out here watching all the action uh, behind us. It's kind of boring and kind of fascinating at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be busier.
we've come down to the bottom of the tower. They've got a really nice fenced in area down here. So they said that we could let the dogs off leash and run around down here. One thing that's been pretty amazing about this place is just how dog friendly it's it is. very dog friendly, which is kind of surprising. Always a plus for us. Yep. So this Bailey yard is the central hub for every single Union Pacific tra train running east to west through the United States. Yep, they all pass through here at some point in time. I'm just gonna be honest with you. My first impression when we got here was that it was slightly boring. All the activity, all of the trains being sorted, it's happening very far away and it's hard it to see. And you know, I was just sort of like underwhelmed. But we, as we were walking through, we started talking to uh, the volunteers here and learning more about how the train yard works. And it became more and more interesting to yes, me. It's quite the operation they have going here for sure. So the volunteer did confirm that it is very slow here right now with the pandemic happening. There's not much activity. They've actually unfortunately had to lay off a thousand employees since January. Yep. And there's two areas here that they call the hump, which is where they sort all the train cars that are, are traveling in different directions. And only one of those is in operation at the moment where normal, under normal circumstances, both of them would be in full operation. And the hump that's currently active is the one farthest away from the viewing area. We were correct. It is kind of slow and hard to see things here right now. Unfortunately, our timing is not great in that regard. Still an interesting place, a definitely a uh, good stop for us, I, I feel. What did you, what did you find most interesting that we've learned? Uh, I asked him how many, you know, what's the longest train they can run basically. And he said it's over like three and a half miles long. Yeah, I think he said 17,200 feet. Yeah. Typically, three engines in the front, three in the middle, two in the back yeah. to push that many train cars, which I, I found pretty interesting. <laughs> I was surprised to learn how technology driven it is. For some reason, when I think of trains, I think that everything's still very manual. And so the engine pushes the train cars up to the top of the hump where there's like a barcode or a computer chip that, it, that they read and it sorts the cars into these different tracks. And then on to different parts of the country. Those are things that without talking to the volunteer, it was a little less interesting. When you're just looking at it, it just looks like trains moving in, in a few different directions. But once you talk to somebody that understands it and can explain it to you, it's actually a very interesting process. It ended up being a really good step for us. It's seven. Stop. $7 a person to, to get up into the tower. Yep. It is a harvest host. Yep, so if you wanted to stay the night here, if you're a harvest host member, you could totally stay the night here. Mm -hmm. um, dog friendly and yeah, it was a, a cool stop. Well, these past few days have been an exercise in flexibility. We had planned on staying here in North Platte because Buffalo Bill Cody uh, had a home here and they've turned it into a state historic site and we were interested in going and visiting it. We called and apparently in October it's only open Saturdays and Sundays. So kind of struck out there. We were going to stay in North Platte with Harvest Host. There was a brewery that we were interested in. We called there. There, they're full till Monday and today's Wednesday. This is the first time last night and tonight that we've tried to stay at a harvest host and they've been full. So we were just gonna stay in the rail yard here, which as we mentioned earlier is a harvest host as well. But instead, we've decided to move east only about an hour um, to another brewery because if we're being honest, breweries and wineries are a little bit more fun for spending the night. <laughs> than maybe a rail yard. It's been crazy though these past couple of days. We've really had to embrace the detours. All right, we made it home for the night. We are at another harvest toast called Max Creek Winery and Brewery. Hadley is pulling my arm off. <laughs> She's such a beast. Hadley! How's your beer? It's very good. <laughs> very good IPA. 
There's a lot of bugs, hence the uh, <laughs> covering. Little bug, yeah, for sure. Do you eat all the nachos? No. <laughs> I know better than that. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, whose support help make these videos possible. If you'd like to help support the production of our videos, please head over to patreon.com forward slash embracing detours. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.